lead to a fall. No one had ever had a more lofty position than Lucifer, the prince of the morning. He was the chief cherub in heaven. He was the music director, the choir director in heaven. But being lifted up in pride, he got his eyes off of God and got his eyes on himself. And being lifted up in pride, he sought to usurp the throne of God, and he said, I will be worshipped like the Most High. But in his attempt to become God, the presumptuous, prideful cherub was booted out of heaven and became the devil. He was cast down from the highest heights possible. Isaiah chapter 14, to the lowest hell. Pride goes or precedes a fall. And a haughty spirit precedes destruction. I believe that we are admonished through the scriptures not to think too highly of ourselves, but in meekness and lowliness, we are to honor God and we are to honor one another. You know, Jesus really had, <laughs> Jesus really had a problem with the spirit and the attitude, the arrogance and the uh, presumptuous carrying on of the Pharisees. They were the religious leaders of Israel. But more than once he called them hypocrites. More than once he called them snakes in the grass. Oh, yes, they looked very impressive in their religious regalia in their long flowing robes. They had everything down pat. Oh, they could recite the law, all of the tenets of the law. And then they had a long list of things that they had added to the law that they were seeking to impose upon the people themselves that had no basis in Scripture. Jesus really had a problem with those religious snakes in the grass. And he said, you hypocrite. You see, there is a spirit, a presumptuous spirit, an arrogant spirit that goes with self-righteousness. And they were so self-righteous. In Mark chapter 3, Jesus went into the synagogue in Capernaum. And the self-righteous snakes in the grass, the presumptuous religious leaders were watching him not to praise him, not to honor him, not to worship him, but to find fault and to condemn him. Oh, they detested the Son of God. They detested him. And they watched him that they might condemn him. You know, there is nothing any worse in the world than an old fault-finding, condemning spirit. And I'm sorry that there are people scattered around in all churches and religious organizations today that operate in that mode. They operate in that spirit, a spirit of self-will. And uh, as, as, as Peter said, they... Uh, <laughs> They uh, are self-loving and self-willed. They scoff and revile. They find fault and they criticize. They disparage and they demean. And so was the spirit of the arrogant, presumptuous Pharisee. Here in the third chapter, there was a man in the synagogue with a withered hand. And they watched him to see if Jesus would heal him on the Sabbath. 
so that they could condemn him and find fault with him. Friend, is that all you're about today? Church member? Elder in the church? Do you have a condemning spirit? Are you always looking for something to criticize? God has called us to be good finders. I, I know that we have to try to correct errors and we have to take care of business sometimes, you know, and have order and decorum. Uh, we, we are not to be a mob, we're to be an army. And you have to have order and you have to have uh, re respect and uh, uh, decorum or otherwise you're going to have a mess and God will not bless a mess. But they watched Jesus to see what he, what he would do. And Jesus looked at them, and he was so repulsed. He was so angry, angry with them because of their stone-cold hard. They didn't care anything about the man with a withered hand. They didn't care about the man that had lost his grip on life. Oh, my friends, before I continue, let me say to you, if you have lost your grip on life, Jesus Christ can restore your grip. Our keyboard player at Westside International, O.G. Duncan, got his hand in a saw and it just mangled his fingers. And they told him in the emergency room that he would never, ever play the piano again. Oh, but friend, God has the final word. 